Today we're going to be talking about graduated cylinders and beakers. So here's our first example with a graduated cylinder. I know that this is a graduated cylinder because it's skinnier and that is allowing us to have a more accurate measure of the volume of liquid that we're uh, finding the volume of. So the first thing I need to do is I need to find my meniscus. That's the bottom of the curve of water in our container. So I'm going to look very carefully and I see that this right here is my meniscus. I've drawn a line. You can do it in your head if you need to since we're doing it on a computer, but that helps me know that's where I'm measuring to. So I see that there's a line right here and that's what I need to figure out. Hmm, what line, what number goes on that line? So we kind of have to think about this like a number line and figure out what number goes there. So I know that if I start at zero down here and then I go 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, well, I know between any two numbers that they have labeled on here, it's a gap of 20 so I, or a jump of 20. So here we go. I know that that is a jump of 20. Now, I also see that this line is slightly longer between the 80 and the 100. That tells me that this is another benchmark number. So the benchmark number that's between 80 and 100, well, halfway between that is 90, and that's a benchmark number. So this longer line right here is 90. Okay, so we've got 90 here, we've got 80 here. So we know that the volume of this liquid is somewhere between 80 and 90, and it's going to be closer to 80. So we need to think about what might be reasonable for that. Well, we can figure it out exactly because we know that there are one, two, three, four, five jumps between 80 and 90. And if I'm thinking about this like a number line, I have to go from 80 to 90, which is 10 numbers, but I only have five jumps to do it in. So if I count by ones, I would get 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, but that doesn't match up with 90. So I'm going to try skip counting by twos, 80, 82, 84, 86, 88, 90. That matches up. So I know that these lines are skip counting by twos. So that means I have 80 here. The next line up would be 82. So I'm going to come over to my box and I'm going to type in 82. Here we go, 82, oops. And I can't forget my units because we're measuring here and it's really important that we have what units we're measuring in. Okay, so there is our graduated cylinder example. Now we're gonna look at a beaker. I know that this is a beaker because it's larger, um, it's wider than a graduated cylinder and it's usually used for larger volumes of liquid. So here we go. If I put my zero down here, because I know that we start at zero if there's no, no liquid in there. So zero to 200. Oh, you know what? I forgot to find my meniscus. So my meniscus is right here. It's the, the bottom of the curve. So it looks like it's gonna be this line right here that I'm gonna be measuring to. So now I need to start figuring out what that line is. So if I'm thinking about this like a number line, each jump between numbers is 200 milliliters. So I know that my volume is gonna be somewhere between 600 and 800. So we have a 200 milliliter jump here and we need to figure out what these are in between. So here's a longer one. I know that this is going to be a benchmark number and a benchmark number halfway between 600 and 800 is 700. And then a number that's halfway in between 600 and 700, well, that's 650. So I know that that is going to be my measurement. So 650 and my units is 